Well, we are adding to our doll size snack cake collection with some of these little cherry fruit pies, just like mom used to pack in our lunchbox. Stay tuned and see what a fun and easy project this is. All right, we're adding to our snack cake playlist this week by making a cherry fruit pie or some cherry fruit pies. Other snack cake companies make these. I think Little Debbie has one. I'm not sure if it's the same size or not. I haven't seen those. My grocery store doesn't carry those. I know Entermans has them and other little companies have them, but this was what they had. This happened to be on sale. Now, they don't come wrapped in that box and because I want to be able to eat this, I put it into a plastic bag. That way when I'm done with the video filming, I can enjoy the cherry pie. So I still can see the color very clearly. I can see the texture. I can see all of the shape, all of those things through the bag and I don't contaminate this with clay because you don't want to be getting polymer clay on real food that you're going to consume. Now I, I've been playing with this crust color for several days. Literally, I started working on this combination right after I finished the sal filming the salad video that we had last on the channel. And it's taken me a while to get this color right to the color I want. Now, I'm not going specifically off of this exactly because I don't think this is a very attractive crust color, quite frankly. The crust color on the photograph looks so much better to me. So we are going to be basing it more on this color rather than this color. So to get this color, what worked best for me was approximately equal parts of Sculpey Original and Fimo in Classic in Yellow Ochre. Now this is, because it's Fimo Classic, it's a very hard clay. I don't know if Fimo, Fimo has yellow ochre in the softer line or not. If they do, go ahead and use that, but I have a lot of this on hand and I have been, I got it conditioned this morning, so I am going to turn the camera off and I'm going to thoroughly blend these two colors. Now, because this is a lot softer than this, it's gonna take a little more time to get them combined than if I had two soft colors, but they will combine. And I know that they probably have a different baking temperature whenever you're combining clays. You can combine polymer clays of different brands that have different baking temperatures. What you do is you go by the lowest recommended temperature. So whichever clay has the lowest temperature, that's what you follow. So I'm going to turn the camera off and when I come back, I will have these two colors combined to make a slightly ye lighter yellow ochre. I'll see you then. All right, so here's the color I've got. Now this has a couple of advantages. Number one, we've lightened up the color of the yellow ochre. Let me grab a little bit of yellow ochre if it's not been conditioned. You can see we've lightened it up quite a bit. It makes it a lot more in line with what this crust looks like. Also, we've taken a very firm, hard clay and we've made something that we can work with pretty easily, but it's not overly soft. Uh, had I used a soft clay and mixed it in with the, uh, with the original Sculpey, it could have gotten very, very wimpy and soft. So now I need to cut down a small piece because we are going to start rolling out some sheets of clay. So I'm going to start by rolling this out using single popsicle sticks or craft sticks. Ignore the creaking of my table. It's very, very old and it uh, makes a lot of noise some days. When you hear that noise, that's my table. I should probably climb under it again and see if I need to tighten the legs up. But the table's over 100 years old and it's, uh, I'd probably make noises if I was that age too. All right, now I am going to pull this up and for each cherry pie that we are making right now, we'll need to cut a strip of clay. 
and I'm using two pieces of graph paper today. So I get this popped up. I'm doing this so that I don't stretch my clay as I pull it off the, the tile. I'm using this one to cut my initial shape. This is four squares to the inch. I'm using it, number one, it's quicker for me to read it with just four squares. I'm gonna use the eight squares to the inch later when I'm refining the size of my pie. But for me, it works much better to have a little bit bigger. And I didn't roll it out on this today because sometimes when I do that, I get some of the ink and I didn't feel like dealing with that today. Not always, some, some lighter clays, I've gotten some ink off of this particular piece. So first I'm gonna cut two inch pieces off of the whole thing. And we will be trimming this again. And that stretched a little, but that's okay. All right, let's put this one off to the side. Now, I'm just lining my knife up there, so two inches by one and a half inches. And as I've said before, this is a little bit oversized from what we're going to need. But that way we can um, we can cut it back to what we need. So I am going to cut myself probably two more of these, so I have a total of four to work with off camera, and then when I get those cut, I will come back and we'll make these into our little whole pies. All right, I have my rectangles cut, and I've rolled some of the scrap clay out to, or the extra clay out to a snake that is 3 eighths of an inch in diameter, about. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to move this out of my way so that I can work here. And now I'm going to cut one inch long pieces of this. That piece is a little bit skinny, so I'm not going to use it. And I'd rather go a little bit, a little thicker on this than thinner. All right, now put that off to the side. And I'm gonna work one at a time. I'm gonna put this approximately in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can use any scrap clay. This is just on my table, so I'm using it. But if you have a scrap clay bag handy, you could grab whatever out of it because this is not gonna show because these, remember, are the ones that are sealed shut. Now, fold that over and start pinching around the edges. And I got air in there, which I did not want to do. We don't want a big air bubble in there. That's better. And kind of smush that filling part. Smush it out so that it's filling the pie like it really would. Now, lay this down. Now these this doesn't have, a, it has a tiny bit of a point pointing downward, but not a lot. The ones we make from clay will probably have slightly more pronounced little tips going down, and that's okay. They're probably going to. So line up the back fold with, a, with one of the heavy lines and kind of center this, or kind of put this so that your edge is near one of those so your point is right at that. All right. I'll try and get pictures of this of these steps and put on the blog post as I do some of these. Now, take your clay knife, cut off at that one inch, and then we want to cut at one and a half. Four of these over, which is here. It grow. It will grow a little bit. And then at seven eighths. Now I have a clay round cutter. 
You could use a cookie cutter. Just be sure that you don't use that cookie cutter for food again. And let me measure this to be sure I just grabbed it. This one is about an inch and a half. Yeah. Now line it up so that this corner is touching the sides on the inside. And so that the front doesn't quite come to the front. That's going to give us some nice gracefully curved corners. Now you could do that with a knife, with your clay knife, if you don't have a cutter. That would be fine. Now, I've got some fairly coarse sandpaper. I'm not going to texture the bottom very much. I'm going to leave it pretty much plain. I am going to texture the top. I'm going to start with this tool. This came in a package of hair dye. Um, it's a little applicator for that. Any firm brush with plastic bristles would work. I just like this because it fits on my finger. And it allows me to get some divots in here. And try and get some of those down in that area. All right, now I've got a toothbrush. And by having the sandpaper on the bottom, that's helping that to get a little bit of texture on the bottom. So I'm going to set, I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to go through and do these other three up to this point. When I get them there, we'll start, I'll come back and we'll start adding our chalks. All right, all four of these are now formed, and there there's slight variations in these. Try, you know, if you can get them the same, that's great. I did not quite get mine all the same because, you know, life. So we are going to chalk these, but unlike most times, after I finish chalking this, and you'll see why in a moment, they're going to have to sit for a while before you can put them in the oven. So we're starting with two of our colors we use quite a bit. I have a yellow ochre and I have a rust color. And I'm just going to get yellow ochre and yellow ochre. It's not a lot of change, but it's kind of, it makes the rust look a little more like I want it to than putting it on directly on the ochre colored clay. So we have that. And really work it in. And now, the thing we're doing a little differently because this has a glaze on it and the glaze has spots of where it's a little thicker and that that took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do to make it look like that it's going to be two steps our first step I have white chalk here white is a color we don't use very often I have a pretty fluffy brush and I have some water dipping that into some water and then into that white chalk. Let's get a little more water in there. Basically, we're, we're hydrating that white chalk and making, not really a paint. Uh, oh, where's something to? I like to do this without getting too much of a mess all over my table. Basically, you're splatter painting. You want lots of little drops of this white liquefied chalk. And then this will need to be totally dry before we can go on to uh, the next step before we bake this. So I'm going to put a few more drops on this. I think my thunderstorm that's been predicted all afternoon is about ready to hit because the wind is picking up. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to get these caught all done up to this step and then I'm going to let them dry completely, and then I'll be back. All right, once you're sure that that uh, liquefied chalk has dried, 
then go ahead and chalk the bottom side if you want to, that's optional. Then go through and make sure that your edges are pinched together really nicely. You want a really fine, um, really thin edge if possible. And try to not have it level with the bottom. Try to have it kind of up a little bit. And then kind of make sure everything's shaped the way you want. Now this is the messy part, so have a wet wipe on hand. Oh, and first let me talk about what I'm working on top of. This is a piece of parchment paper. It's one of these little squares. I like I get these at Dollar Tree. They're a dollar and a quarter for the hundred of them. They are a little bit slipperier than a lot of the parchment paper that I've bought on a roll. It's really slippery and that's what we need for this step. This step will need to be done on something like this and when I get done I'm going to transfer this to my paper plate very carefully and bake directly on it. Now I have my almost empty liquid clay and this is a liquid Sculpey in white which is their the one I use the most. Now you could probably use um, to, um, Bacon Bond or any of those, but this is kind of coated in a glaze. And I played around with several different things trying to come up with a good way to do this glaze. And this is what worked the best. Put on my finger. I'm going to work on the bottom first. Now you could bake this with just the bottom, just one side coated, then flip it over and coat the top and do and bake it again. That's fine. I am usually just bake these once with both sides done. As long as you're on a nice slippery parchment, it shouldn't stick. And use your finger. This is why that white had to be completely dry, because you don't want to smear it. And it's going to, it's going to liquefy some of your, your chalk that's on there. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to do the other three, and then I'm going to bake this. And since this is pretty thick, I'm going to bake it at the recommended temperature, the lowest recommended temperature for the combination of clays I have. And I'm going to bake it for a full 15 minutes because these are thick enough that I want to make sure that they are that it's cured all the way through. And when they're cured and cooled, I'll come back and talk to you. All right, these are baked off and ready to go. And as you can see, they've got that look of the glaze on them. I love how these came out. So. Let's really quickly make a couple of cherry pies that are broken open so we can see that there are cherries in them. I'll be right back once I get all my stuff gathered up. All right, first off, I did break my little cherry pie so I can see inside of it and kind of see what it looks like. And I made two more of our miniature, of our doll size pies. They look darker because they don't have the white on them yet. Um, and I froze them. These have been in the freezer for uh, probably almost a half hour by now because I got busy and started doing something else. So I am going to break these a little more controlled than I did the real one, but I'm going to try to cut from the bottom and then kind of break. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Now you could just cut it really close to him. In fact, this one, let's go up here a little more. And this one we won't do. So we'll have one that's been broken in half and one that maybe is partially eaten. So now we have, and like I said, this is done exactly the way I did these right up to just before I put the, um, the liquid clay on the outside. So now, I am using a pin because I can't find my normal pointy tool. Now, actually, I'm going to start with my clay knife. And be very careful. And we're not going to go very far in. We're only going to go a little ways. That's why we didn't fill these with foil like we did our... Um, uh, Hot Pockets, I think is what we did that with. 
No, I'm standing the camera. I'm just going to pull out just a little bit because we don't need to be texturing this part. A small hollow here without breaking through to the outside. Use your fingers, use your tools. Oh, let's get the toothpick. Just so we have room to tuck a, a few of our cherries in there. Now, we're going to take our pen and we're going to create a crumb texture. Which means we're just kind of, I'm just kind of almost tickling the edge of the cut part of the clay, the where the edge is. I just want to raise up some crumbs. I want to get those pieces. And this is much easier if you've got a regular pointy tool. In fact, I might go over. I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to go across the room and grab my uh, weeding tool for my Cricut. I'll be right back. All right, we'll see if this, oh yeah, that's going to work a little better than the pen. You can put as much or as little detail as you want there. And now let's see, let's see if I can dig out with this. First. on this is a little bit fatter than I like to use but the pin was really hard to hold on to so I'm going to turn the camera off I'm going to finish this up and get this one done also then I'll come back and we'll go to the next step all right I have an opening in each one of these and I have textured the parts that will show the cut edges of the crust here I have some Primo in Alizarin Crimson, and it's mixed about equal parts with, uh, I think it's Sculpey Translucent in my collection right now, in my stash. So I'm going to roll a snake, probably a little bit smaller than a quarter inch. I want it to go through that quarter inch hole yeah, really easily. It's probably, it's bigger than an eighth, I'm sure. It's quite a bit bigger than an eighth, but it's quite a bit smaller than a quarter. So it's somewhere in, in between there. And I'm going to cut a bunch of little pieces. I like alizarin crimson for cherries. Um, I think it's a beautiful color when making cherries. And maybe next year we'll do some... some um, fresh cherries. I don't think we'll get to them this year because I don't think I have enough crimson left. This is most of what I've got. Alright, so you're going to make a bunch. 
and off camera I will finish that up. And then each of those gets rolled into a little ball. Now remember the cherries in these little pies are pretty small. They're not, they're not the big cherries like you get in the grocery store. All right, then here I have some liquid Sculpey mixed with a little bit of Rose Matter oil paint. I love Rose Matter for getting these really pretty cherry red colors. It doesn't turn orange like a lot of the reds do. Oops. And now this is why we made such a small hole, so we don't need to use as much of this. a little bit in that and stick them in. And you don't need a lot of cherries. You don't want a lot of cherries in each one. In fact, that's probably two of them. It's probably about all I want in that one. Let's get this one again. Put some of the Sculpey, the liquid Sculpey mixture inside and try to, to get this brushed against the, um, the, the parts that, the, that are supposed to look like the inside of the crust because that would have the, the juicy stuff in it. Then. And probably no more than three cherries per pie, but two is probably even better. So I am going to go ahead off to mix just a tiny bit more of this, and then I'm going to get this one done, and then I'll come back and we'll do the last step before baking. All right, all three of these have their cherries in them. I did get a third one in this bigger one. And now just like before, we're going to take our liquid Sculpey. I really need to get to a store that carries Sculpey and get more. And we're going to run this over the outside just like we did before, trying not to get it into the inside. And once again, I am going to bake these at the recommended temperature for right about 15 minutes. Then once they are baked and cooled, I will come back and we will see how these all look. So I'll see you then. All right, here we have our cherry pies out of the oven and ready for the dolls. You can see the cherry pie filling has stained the crust just like in the real thing and they look delicious. Um, there's the other two. Be sure and check the blog post for photos. I'll try and get some photos of everything together now that they're finished. Um, and there'll be more information over there as always. And the link for the blog post is always in the description box below the video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure and leave a thumbs up and a comment. What kinds of things would you like to see made in future videos? And are there any other flavors of these little uh, snack pies that you would like to see me make because we can replicate other fillings in future videos. If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, I encourage you hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching today and I will talk to you next time. Bye!